everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Did you know that a glass full of Horlicks makes a delicious and refreshing noonday luncheon? One that keeps you alert and on your toes later. Well, thousands of our listeners have testified to that very fact. They say there's nothing like this Horlicks luncheon for weight control, too. Horlicks doesn't have the excess calories of a heavy meal. A simple, easy-to-digest luncheon, a good glass of Horlicks contains sufficient nourishment to sustain you. Then, if desired, at the fatigue period in mid-afternoon, take another energy-giving glass, or dissolve a few Horlicks tablets in your mouth. Remember this, too. The Horlick plan is a safe plan. Get a package from your favorite druggist. You have a choice of either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Squire Skimp has taken hold of Lum and Abner's collection of animals and plans to have the circus ready for the grand opening by the last of the week. He's been busy the past few days arranging the attractions for the sideshow. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner over at the Jotham Down store discussing the matter. Listen. Squire's well, a good circus man, all right, but I'm just afeard he'll get us in a batch of trouble if he don't stick a little closer to the truth. Kind of truth? Yeah, putting them signs up over the cages over there, claiming them animals to be something that they ain't. Yeah. He's got them two house cats you swap for in a cage there with a big sign saying they come direct from Persia. Well, now, them are Persia cats, all right, Mom. Yeah, but they never come from Persia. You got them from Grandma Meeks. Well, yeah, but now, she told me herself that they were full-blood Persia cats. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know what elephant she said. white, painting Cedric up that way and claiming he is a wild man from Borneo. You know he ain't from Borneo. No. Well, they could say wild man from Pine Ridge on him. Well, in the first place, he ain't no wild man. No. <laughs> I know because he looked like he wild when Squire turned him out of that cage last night. Yeah. <laughs> he just lit out for home in a dead run. <laughs> yeah, Squire had no business locking him up in there that way like he was an animal. Oh, well, they sure had me fooled there yesterday when I first looked at him. <laughs> I never would have known him all painted up that way. His hair all frizzed up, and them rings in his nose and ears. <laughs> Well, fact is, his own folks never knowed him when he got home. Run him off in the place. They did? Why, yes, they did. They was all sitting down there at the supper table eating, and Cedric stuck his head in the door and just scared the daylights out of them. I reckon it would. <laughs> Look up from a plate of vittles and see a face like that. Oh, well, they just all scattered in all directions. They never got all the children rounded up till oh, it was might nine and midnight before they got them all catching back in the house. Well, why didn't Cedric wash that coloring off of him before he went home? Why, he couldn't. It won't come off. That was walnut stain that Squire painted him with. Walnut stain? Yes. Then he never will get that stuff off. He'll always have to be a wild man. Yeah. <laughs> Still, it wears off. Well, now, Cedric Paul Caleb is mad enough to buy it. He is. Oh, he was down at the barber shop this morning looking for Squire. Said he's just going to beat the way out of him. You mean on account of him painting Cedric up that way? Yeah, I'm trying to make an actor out of Cedric, uh, put him on exhibit that way. Well, I'd hate to have that Caleb looking for me to give me a whooping. He's liable to cripple Squire for life. That Caleb don't know his own strength. No, no, you get him mad and stout as he is, why, well, no telling what he would do to a fella. Well, somebody ought to tell Squire so he can keep out of Caleb's way. Yeah, well, I tried to find him this morning to warn him about it, but couldn't locate him no place. Uh, I reckon Squire's done here to hide now. <laughs> Well, I don't blame him, neither. Moe's Moot said that he never seen Caleb so mad in his life. Well, I hope Squire don't get in no trouble over it. Yeah. I'd get out and look for him, but I've got to finish writing these letters. What letters? These letters we've been getting from folks wanting to know why they ain't got their flashlights yet. Oh. I figured we ought to write them and explain to them how they come the delay and all. Yeah, some of them is getting impatient, huh? Yeah, we got three letters this morning complaining about it. Well, you can't blame them much, Mom. No, no, I ain't blame them. That's the reason I thought we'd better write and tell them the reason we ain't been able to get them all out. Yeah, well, why don't you just call up and make an announcement on the party line? Tell them all at once that time and save yourself so much trouble. I well, you could do that. Yeah. That's just what I'll do. I expect... sure. Just go ahead there and get the fire alarm ring and make an announcement and tell them about it, Mom. Yeah, I expect I can explain it better over the telephone anyway. Uh, is all these letters here from folks that ain't got their flashlights yet? No, there's some in that stack there from them that's already got them. Mm. Awful nice letters, too, saying how well pleased they are and all. What a nice gift they think the flashlight is. Well, it won't be long now before they all get them. Wait a minute. 
They uh, all want to know where the fire's at. Oh, well, tell them it ain't none. Howdy, everybody. Uh, this is Lum Edwards down at the Jot 'em Down store talking. Mm-hmm. I just want to make an announcement and explain to all you folks that ain't got your flashlights yet, uh, please not to be impatient, for we're sending them out just as fast as the flashlight factory can make them. Yeah, we are. Me and Abner is awful embarrassed over this. You folks was nice enough to send in for one of them, and we wanted to send them right out. But, well, just to be right honest about it, we we got all the factory had on hand and had to wait till they could make some more before we could send them. Yeah. But they're they're making about 10,000 of them a day now, and we're sending them out just as fast as we can. Yeah, we sure are. Like I said, me and Abner's terrible sorry about this delay, and I want you to know we appreciate you being so nice about it. Yeah. We want to thank every last one of you for writing in. You, you've done us a big favor, and we appreciate it. And we hope you all like your flashlight Not when long. you Here comes Squire Skin. Huh? Squire oh. Skin. Well, I, I reckon that's all for today. Good luck, everybody. Where's Squire? Ain't coming in here, I think. Yeah, yeah. Then he's a bit he don't know Caleb's looking for it. <laughs> Hey, howdy, Squire. Yeah, come in, Squire. We got something important to tell you. Yeah, you oughtn't to be out gallivanting around on the streets this way, Squire. No, you better lay low for a few days. Well, what's the matter, man? Or what's wrong now? You, you ain't saw Keela Wee Hunt today, have you? Keela Wee Hunt? Yeah. Why, yes, uh, I just now talking with him over at the blacksmith shop. Uh, well, the fact is, I just now hired him. Hired him? Uh, yes, uh, he's going to put on a strong man act in the sideshow for us. Well, for the great, I am. Uh, Swan Squire, you're the beatenest feller I ever seen in my life. You could talk yourself out of might by anything, I believe. It's, it's, uh, I sure believe you can do. Sir. Well, uh, Caleb was a little mad there at first, but uh, he got over it. Uh, well, what I come over for, man, I, I want to talk to you fellers. Uh, I'm trying to get things all lined up uh, so we can open up the show by Saturday. I've uh, got to have a few more tractions, though. Tractions? Yes. Well, anyway, I mean, Abner can help you. We want to do our part. I'd love to get in the thing if I can. Yeah, I would, too. I'd love to be a circus actor. That's what I'd love to be. Yeah, I believe I've got talents, too. Well, uh, we're a little short-handed, men. I- I'm going to have to call on you fellas to take part in the performances, all right. Oh, you want us to take part in it? Well, yes. Uh, now, Lum, uh, I'm sort of figuring on making a trapeze performer out of you. A tra... Uh... You mean you want me to get up there in them swings and jump from one of them to the other and all that business? Well, uh, yes. Now, of course, Lum, uh, we'll have a net underneath there, uh, so if you would happen to fall, why, you won't hurt yourself none. It's a good stout net, is it? Oh, yes, yes. Ain't no danger that, Lum. Won't hurt you at all, yes. My granny, sir, I wish we had something solid like a tent under there. I just wondering how we could work that. Well, I get that fire net that the boys got in there in the fire department not long ago. Well, I can just get the fire department to come down there and sort of follow me around when I jump from one swing to the other, and they can sort yeah. of. Yeah, yeah, oh. sure, could do that. Well, now, don't have no words at all, Lum. Now, that net will hold you now. Uh, yeah, but I don't, I don't know nothing about trapeze and those. Oh, well, now, don't worry about that, Mom. You catch on with a little practice. Uh, by the way, uh, here's a costume that I found over there in one of them trunks that was over there. You can wear that, Lum. Uh, well, I do know. Better slip it on and see how it fits, too. Well, for goodness sake, <laughs> look at that. Now, Granny, that ain't enough clothes to water shotgun. Well, now, they're regular trapeze performer types, is what they're like. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll step back here in the feed room and put them on. Yeah, I know I'll look aside in them, though. <laughs> uh, ain't you gonna let me be nothing, Squire? Oh, yes, yes, Abner. Uh, I'm figuring on you being the bearded lady. The bearded? Me, a woman? Well, yes, uh, them chin whiskers of yours will just work out fine, uh, you know, we put some uh, women's clothes on you, and uh, you can wear a wig, and uh, why, law me after your best friend wouldn't know you. Well, I hope not, if I'm going to have to put on an outfit like that. Well, now, I've got everything all figured out now uh, to get the show started off, except an animal trainer. An uh, animal trainer? Yes, uh, I- I've got to have somebody to train those cats down there, if I can find somebody that's got nerve enough to do it. Well, law me, let me do that and get somebody else to be the bearded woman. Uh, you, you mean, Abner, that uh, you go in a cage down there with the cats and uh, put them through their tricks? Why, sure. Why not? Well, I just figured that uh, you might be afraid to get in a cage with them down there. Why, no. <laughs> no, I ain't afraid of nothing, Squire. Well, now, that is fine, Abner. Yeah, that solves the problem for us right there. I, I won't have to be the bearded woman, too, will I? 
Well, no, no. We'll let them cats down there will take up all your time. Now, I tell you, you better start staying down there with them all you can, Abner, and uh, get them used to you, you know, if you're going right in the cage with them that way. Yeah, well, I'll learn them all sorts of tricks. Just take hands with me and all sit you there. Yes. Well, now, another thing, you want to pick out one of them there, Abner, and train him to let you put your uh, head in his mouth, you know. Well, I don't believe that their mouth is big enough for that, Squire. Well, why, sure, one of them tigers has got a heap bigger mouth than you think, Abner. Yeah, but I don't believe it be... Huh? What did you say? I just said that uh, you wouldn't have no trouble getting your uh, head in a tiger's mouth. Well, who said anything about tigers? You asked me to train them two Persian cats down there. Oh, no, no, you misunderstood me, Abner. I said cats, all right, but you know, in the parlance of the circus, why, uh, tigers and lions are always referred to as cats. I, I thought you knew well, that. Well, uh, is this all there is to this outfit? Uh-huh. Oh, yes, yes. Come on out here, Lump. Let us look at you. <laughs> Jenny, I wouldn't get out in front of nobody with a get-up like this on. Oh, Swan, Lump. You look like a jaybird in that outfit. <laughs> You look like you're about eight foot tall. Well, I'll be dead blamed if I wear it. Why, Lum, you'll be a sensation. Well, you, you just give me a big idea there. Why, you can be the trapeze performer in the main tent, and then you can be the swim man in the sideshow. And Abner here is going to be the animal trainer. Well, I couldn't get along without you fellas at all. <laughs> well, it looks like Lum and Abner are going to take a very important part in Squire's plans for the circus. Before we leave Pine Ridge for the night... I'm going to read a letter from Mrs. F.C. of Chicago. It will especially interest those of our listeners who have babies of their own. She writes, When my baby daughter was born, she weighed seven and a quarter pounds and seemed a perfectly healthy child. But after six weeks, she began losing weight. She just couldn't hold any food. At six months, she weighed less than when she was born. Then one day, I met a lady with a baby boy of the same age as my baby. He was such a big boy, it made me feel badly to think that my little baby was so sick. She said she was feeding him Horlick's malted milk. We decided to try it. And it was the first thing that stayed on her stomach since the time she was six weeks old. She grew big and strong. I wish you could see her now. She's perfectly healthy. We can never thank Horlick's enough. Well, thank you, Mrs. F.C., for this good letter. We know just how you feel about Horlick's malted milk. In the last 50 years, we have received many thousands of letters just like yours. It is important to always keep a package of Horlick's on hand in the home. It has so many uses. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horley, who now bid you all good night and good health.